SPD leaders, OR leaders, listen up. No more excuses, no more BS, do your damn job. Hey, sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. And in today's video, I'm gonna jump into the highly requested topic of point of use cleaning. Just saying those words, I can feel the anger welling inside of me. Let me try to remain calm as we discuss this very important topic. Point of use cleaning, when not done, is one of those very important pieces of the process that makes sterile processing technicians rip their hair out. And obviously, I've dealt with this for a while. What I'm going to be covering can be found in Amy ST79 2017 under chapter 6.3, which is called point of use care and handling of contaminated reusable items and chapter 7.5.1 called pre-soaking. You can also find information on point of use cleaning in the AORN guidelines 2024, which is the Association of Operating Room Nurses. And you can also find it in the AST guidelines for surgical technicians, which is known as the Association of Surgical Technologists. Point of use cleaning is not sterile processing specific. It is within the job classes of nurses and surgical techs and sterile processing techs. Here's the main problem up front. Skipping point of use cleaning is leaving blood and debris and all that junk on your surgical instruments, which is highly corrosive and is a direct threat to your instrument quality. Blood on the instruments can corrode the inner and outer layer of the metals, as well as cause pitting in the instruments. This is no bueno. We want instruments to last. The more we spend our budgets replacing instruments for careless practices, the less money we have to get the updates to the machinery we want, to right size our instrumentation so we have enough trays so we don't have to IUSS. Because we're spending money on this, we cannot spend money on that. So when it comes to point of use cleaning, there are five critical things we need to talk about. Critical item number one, point of use cleaning is just that, cleaning at the point of use. There's no faster way to prevent corrosion than to handle it directly after that instrument is used. This is a surgical tech or a scrub nurse's responsibility after the case. As a surgical tech, I was continually wiping down all my instruments through the entire procedure. This is something that should always be done. A lot of times you'll see surgical techs that'll hold a wet ray tech like in a couple fingers of their palm. So they're still using fingers to like pass and organize and whatnot, but always have that ray tech right close by with sterile water to clean those instruments. I would always clean the instruments as soon as it was handed back. So as I'm replacing instruments with the surgeon, then I'm cleaning this instrument and then putting it back so that it's ready for when he needs it again or she needs it again. And that brings me to critical item number two. Surgical techs or scrub nurses should only be cleaning the instruments on the field with sterile water. Saline is a no-go. Just like with blood, saline is highly corrosive to stainless steel. Surgical techs need to have saline on the field for irrigation of the patient, but they need to also have sterile water on the field for the cleaning and soaking of the instruments. If you don't have time to wipe down the instrument as a surgical tech, you can throw it in the sterile water and come back to it when you can because the sterile water is gonna keep it moist, it's gonna help the blood to break down, so at least it's ready to be cleaned when the time comes. It's really that easy. Critical item number three, cannulas and lumens need to be continually flushed during the surgical procedure. Just like the suction itself, if you don't continually either clean the suction, change the suction, flush the suction, um, put a stylet through the suction, it's gonna clog eventually through the procedure. So that is something you need to be cleaning because there's all this dry blood inside the cannula. And how many times during a procedure does a doctor have to change suction because it stops working because it's fully 
clogged from dry material. That's why it's a good practice to have multiple of the same sizes of suctions within your trays. So like if a physician is using a 10 French Fraser suction, you should have two of those so that when that one is starting to clog up or not do well, or you just wanna be proactive, you can change it out periodically in the surgical procedure. Critical item number four, instruments need to be disassembled to their simplest form before sending them back to sterile processing. Allowing blood or debris to harden on the outside of the instrument is highly corrosive, but allowing it to harden and whatnot in the middle of the conjoined parts of instrumentation is just as bad. Disassembling those instruments to the smallest components ensures that not only do they get the chance to be wiped down, but they are able to be kept moist in between use and cleaning and sterile processing. And the fifth and last critical item, this one is very, very important. If you're gonna miss any of the other stuff, do not miss this one at least. Number five, pre-soaking. This should be done as soon as possible with a product intended to loosen soil. Unless of course it is contraindicated by the instrument itself. In that case, you will follow that instrument and manufacturer IFU. Depending on which product you use is gonna determine how close to point of use you can actually apply that. So if you have something that is aerosolizing, you're not gonna wanna use that in a surgical uh, sweet because you don't want that to somehow affect the patient. Um, there's You can't ensure everyone's wearing the right PPE for that specific product. So if it's aerosolizing, don't do it in the operating room. But what we did is we had like a gel-like product or a foaming-like product that we could actually put onto the instruments that was not aerosolizing. So the surgical techs could actually take this product. So just before they break down their back table, they can take this product, spray all their instruments, spray into the lumens, and then put the trays on the cart and then take the back table and throw it away. Super easy. They only have to touch the instruments one time. They don't have to get to the ante room and then pull the instruments out to spray them, put them back, all done at once, tabletop, easy. And with doing it at that close a point of use, that shows incredible continuity in keeping instruments moist and safe for cleaning and for next use. A lot of other options I see is where just by the um, dirty elevator where they send the carts back, they'll have a station where they have some spray foam or, or whatever it is. But a lot of times surgical techs are in a hurry. Once they're done with the case and they've left the room, that means the patient has also left the room. So the clock is ticking. Not only do they have to take those dirty instruments and send them down, they need to go and clean up, change whatever they need to change, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, and then be on their next case cart and or help finish cleaning the room to get the next case set up. The easier you can make it for your surgical techs, the better compliance you're gonna have. Now that you know the five critical items for point of use cleaning, it is your leader's responsibility to ensure that this is happening. If it is not happening, it is a problem with your SPD leadership and your OR leadership not coming together and making sure that everyone is following the policies and working together as a team that is following the standards. Sometimes this takes courage and it takes a backbone but it is absolutely necessary. You're not here to make friends. You're here to follow standards and make sure patient care is safe. SPD leaders, OR leaders, listen up. No more excuses, no more BS, do your damn job. Your techs deserve leaders that are looking out for them and that are taking care of them. Any topics or videos you wanna see, don't hesitate to put it in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe. I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.